be fine. So you guys can balance your audio volumes. This is fine. It's fine. No crackling. Wonderful. 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 Okay, let's. I take drink. Okay, we ready? I'm. I'm not ready. Okay. And so technically, um, there is a the part of knowing what you draw, right? So when you when you know what, what you draw, you basically know what line you're at and where you are in your space. That, that it sounds it sounds so logical, but so then again, I can imagine fairly complex structures, and I may not always know where I am in my space. Um, and generally, the thing with basically drawing, trying to draw 3D and doing this on a 2D space, which is basically the canvas, the canvas space is a 2D space. And I try to, oh, that is that is the exercise, try to maintain the illusion of 3D, right? So where does it go in space is usually the question because on my two, on my 3D object I can, you know, find a point and say, okay, left and right, up and down. So I can transition fairly easy in my, come on, draw, draw two, a 2D, in my 2D space, right? What I know is there is, I have, I have the additional D, um, and I have to figure out how to go sideways and forward and backward. Yes, it's that guy. <laughs> so basically, from, from any point, and that is that is the, the the most simple diagram we know of for the three D is basically this, right? It's like we have these three handles, and we can say this is X, this is Y, this is Z, and Z, and we basically know what is going on. But still, we have three D space in three hundred sixty directions, and if I go by ninety degrees. And I cut this in two, and then two again, and two again, and two again, and two again, and two again, two again. So possibly I have all of these directions basically times four, right? So from any point, and this again is the complexity of basically four. When we have, when I have my box, right, the one line goes forward, the one goes sideways. Again, what I don't see are my variations of my di diagonals. Right, because the next box doesn't really have ha it doesn't have to be aligned, basically connect to the box at all. Nor does it really have to be basically in the same orientation. This is the difference between the first box and then basically the second box, because it now goes a completely different. It has a different orientation. And this again is where I can have one box go this way, and I know I can. Go by direction, right? I can have my, my box face anywhere in my 2D, 3D space. Right? So when I, when I think about basically complexity of form, it, it's, it's complete madness because instead of, um, having my, having my square, which is basically it has a lead, right? The, the the line that I use to understand its direction is usually the first one. My default perspective is three quarter. I see the top line, and this is this is my default box. I can see the front. I can see the side. The box is to my right, right, right. So even when I draw these these weird things, right. I can still understand there is a three-quarter perspective. I see the top and there's my box. The form itself, right? It does, it does anything between these points. And all I really have to figure out is, does it go up or does it go sideways? And this again is the, is the weirdness because let's say I have a box and I, I find my points and I basically do this. Like what is really happening? This is, it's not something the brain can see because I can basically have 
this look like some weird banana basically sitting on my on my box like this right and again it's about how to visualize the stuff right and the same the same weird looking banana can basically need more space i have my box and i draw some weirdness so again it can just be an extension of my of my front top plane right where this thing is now extended there's still i know there is a box and this this is the difference between the 2d and the 3d because on my 2d 3d i can say this thing is up space right as if this is a wire it is a it is a very skinny wire and it's basically being bent over the box instead of behind the box right this is this is the weirdness because again the same line the same curve right it exists in two dimensions this it's it's so weird it's so weird because it does indeed exist in up space right between this point and this point, the curve goes up, right? Otherwise, the curve might as well go down or basically sideways. Right? And there is, there is the difference. So why this, this is something I read as a wall, right? It is going down. I can kick it. I can't put a, I can't sit on it, right? I can sit and stand on this, right? Because it forms a top. This does not have a top. But you can see the difference, right? And I can then put this back together and you see how it, <laughs> you know, how it, how it works in weird ways. But this, this is the weirdness. This is the weirdness between 2D drawing and 3D space. Because there is a, I call this the collapse. There is a collapse. And this is this is something very specific. The, my brain, the brain in general, has to figure out. And for for my brain, when I think about drawing in three D, this always comes to mind. It were it were a lot easier if I would just. It's, it's, it's the weirdest transition. Like when you know what you draw, you know where you are in your space. But then again, there is a, um, like I think about variations. It's, it's completely bonkers, right? And again, from, um, up space, down space, so basically a 3D, 2D conversion, a transition, and uh, like, it starts with the 90 degrees, right? And from, from any point, I can go anywhere, right? All I got to do is figure out how to visualize it. And between this, I have a form that is basically um, I don't go easy, right? I go to the place where I know my brain has very specific difficulties. Right to understand, basically, um, and I did this did this earlier with these 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 weird looking shapes, right, like this. This still is again is a top plane. I know there is a box inside, right. I don't draw the box, but this is the perspective this shape exists in. And as you can see, the box is smaller, and there is the extension, right. And again, there are there are these diagonal lines, and it all has to fall in place. So again, from these points, I try to understand that basically, I don't, I, I'd, I'd rather not have square planes, right? So instead of basically going down like a square, I turn this into a triangle so that I have a diagonal line, and this is ex extremely confusing for the brain because now I show you now I show you right I can do the diagonal but I'm not going back and I'm not going sideways because I'm going forward and even if I go forward instead of going forward with the square plane I go forward with the diagonal 
and then instead of basically going down like a small square, I can go with the diagonal. And this is basically it, it's building a very awkward form because you never have a square plane that is easy to measure in terms of 3D. Right? So when, when you draw a triangle, the first thing that comes to mind or should come to mind is basically the square plane to close it off as a 3D volume, basically as a part of the 3D volume. And this, this is, this is where my mind goes and my mind is like, wow, give it to me, right? It's, it's completely bogged. So again, from, from, the, from one of these triangles, I basically find a point or find any point and then again, I have to decide where does it go in space? Does it go sideways? Does it, it could completely skew, right? And we can basically logically, logically think this, this thing goes sideways. And sideways basically from my base is this. It goes sideways off of my base. This is my base. This is my base, right? And this is point X, right? Sideways. From a different perspective, and this again is not something, um, easier to see, this point can be behind point B, meaning I have this thing, my base, and the point is actually going down, but it's also going back, right? It's, it's like, um, what I have to understand is the positioning of the points, and that led to, it's, it's the madness, right? So first, I have to find the base perspective, and this is, this is my box, it's ugly ugly box, right? And I would basically elongate, make this longer, and then figure out is the is the point basically sideways, right? Does it go to the side? So it is behind me to the side and down. Right? And this this is like a sort of triangulation, but I have to understand where does it go. And then again I can have a flat flat circle. And it is part of the cylinder. And again, from any point of the cylinder, I can go anywhere. And instead of going with the square where it is easily identifiable, I go with the diagonal. And even, even for the triangle that I use, there is a lean. I call it a lean because from my base axis, the base axis is between the main points. And then I have, I have the tip of the triangle, right? And the point, that forms the tip can basically shift left or right. And when it does this, right, it shifts from its center point base closer to the axis of one of these points. So this is either, either leaning left or leaning right. And the triangle can do no more than this, right? So from basically finding a point and being able to go anywhere in 360 degrees, right? All I find is my base point, I locate the point, and build my triangle, right? And I know that there is my 90 degree angle, and it is easy to measure because all I got to do is move over, and there's my square. I don't have to draw this. So from the square that I could draw, I move the point and draw a different square, basically, that forms a different triangle. And this is breaking the plane. Right? Because instead of having one axis, so basically one flat plane, we now have two where the angle is broken. <coughs> Yoink. <laughs> so this too, it adds, it adds dimensionality, it adds complexity. Right? And again, um, I shall ask, what is the link? Gotta have some, some context to the link so we find the points, right? And then we have to figure out, does it go back? Does it go sideways? And again, I can basically staying, staying on the top side and going sideways. So basically back like this is still fairly easy, right? Then going back and sideways or so going down and sideways. There is still, um, it's weird for the brain. Like this is, this is how I perceive this. Again, what is the link? What is the link? Is all I gotta know. Right? So again, triangle sideways down. Right? But then again, my brain goes for these variations where I find different points and I want to have 
basically different triangles still leading back into space. And I have this overlapping. It's completely weird. Um, what I'm looking for is again weird sort of geometric setups. And this is a, it's a pentagon, right? It has four corners. And what I'm trying to do is basically I have this one going forward and then one goes back, right? One goes forward, one goes back. This is a specific angle. And I can basically see it on my drawing that this angle is very similar to this. And then again, I like variations, so I change it where it goes, it goes back more. The next one should basically be aligned, and aligned is basically, it's vertical, right? Whenever I get to, um, basically, um, it, it stands out when you have a vertical or horizontal line. And even though this one looks like it is going up, it might as well, it doesn't, right? It just goes back in space again. It is completely weird because it is it's the same line. Weird, right? So from the perspective, again, this line goes up, this one does not. But where's the difference? Right? And this again is something that my brain has to understand. And again, I would change this. I would change this just just slightly. To where I know I'm drawing still on the same plane to then have one actually go up in space. And there has to be a difference between the one that goes up and the one that goes back. That's, it's, it's like, it's like I'm assuming it cannot look the same because I'm existing in a 3D space and only one direction can be equal to another. Right? And if it if this one actually goes up and the other one goes back in space, right? There has to be a difference. So still, one triangle can indeed go back and it looks the same like the triangle going up because again we exist in 3D space and we see it in a weird ways. So this is the triangle going back as far as it has to go, so that me, the viewer, can see the stuff. Right? This is, it's the camera. It's supposed to be the camera. Camera. This is me. Right? And from my point of view, and I shall draw the collapse. <clears throat> so from my point of view, basically these points, they overlap. And all of, all of these lines, I cannot see it because it's all behind it. Is that making sense? It, it's it's weird. <laughs> it is weird, but it, it comes it comes into play with this with, again the the three D two D collapse. So it it has to be logical, right? Because I can have a triangle standing from my center of my of my uh, cylinder, and still pretend the same triangle is going back in space. And this again depends on visualization. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily draw this, but I would draw where one, I have a spike sitting on my cylinder. Right? It's like a party hat. I don't know. And then I know there is a spike that is basically, it has to look like it is going back. How do you visualize? Exactly. You shouldn't. You can't. <laughs> you can only have one. You can have one. Right? And instead of basically confusing myself, I would still say, okay, this one goes up. So I visualize the one going up. And then I attach one that is basically behind the one going up to still try to visualize this one actually going back. So again, the, um, the setup is geometric. Right? With basically, you can always connect your triangles in any way from your cylinder, from your square, basically. Um, <clears throat> uh, what is the point? Um, it's like intuitively, I gravitate towards certain geometric 
setups. It, it seems it seems weird, and I don't I don't go random, right? There has to be a balance. And this is it's a balance that you have at the triangle. It's a balance that you have at the uh, pentagon, pentagram, something. <laughs> it has a name. Uh, it's not the dodecahedron. Um, basically, again, balance. I can't. I can't put it in words any other way. It's. Uh, I'm trying to um, massage through my brain to put it in words, but it is. It's not entirely random, and I. I still build by variation. And something, something, it's like something in my intuition says, do it this way, do it this way, right? Because it makes sense to me. And I'm trying to figure out, um, what is the, the underlying method? I can't just say to you guys, it's my intuition because you can't really use it in any way when I just say it's my intuition <laughs> that solves these, these problems. Um, well, basically, Um, yes, <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> That's so bizarre. If you guys have any questions, please ask or take a drink. Maybe it helps. Like when it comes to when it comes to understanding the complexity and flexibility of space, right? Space in general is madness. And I can I can say this is this is space. It's all space. And this is where visualization is is the key because we have to visualize it by some means. And this is two D space and there's three D space. X Y Z. And from from these points, right? We have basically the point, and it splits into threes, right? And this is where I can have my geometry. And from any point, I can split in threes, right? And this is where the variation begins. And from from these threes, I can have my initial variation. And all I go for is the 45 degree average. So basically, between every two lines, you can find the one that halves it. Between every two lines, you can find the one that halves it. Right, it it cuts it into half, fifty percent average, right? And this is this is what I would do. And if you if you then look at flowers, look at nature, look at leaves, look at plants, look at trees, they all do the stuff, right? You can look at basically. Um, let me let me pull this up real quick. Um, let's see. Let's see if this works. Please don't show me Disney bullshit. Okay, this works. This one. This one. Right? Right? Like, geometry is everywhere, basically. Right? And this is just one example. So there is a there is a underlying system. It is not completely random. And that like in itself is completely bonkers if you think about it too much. Um, <clears throat> so there is a, um, a system, a method, a structure. So this is again we have a a um great amount of variations for form, shape, direction, space, all the good stuff. And again, if we as I will do it, where right, it start at your base. And this is a square plane, it is measurable, it is easy to measure. The triangle itself is much harder to measure. I don't know why, and there is a science to this. Um Basically, understanding the perspective itself for the triangle is a bit different when it comes to maybe it's just drawing. 
A circle is half a square. Huh. <laughs> there's a there's a gap. There's a slight gap. I need more drink. One second. So again, from from the base square. I need to make this a little bit shorter. And I usually I start I start with um more more specific shapes like this. Right? And it's still there is a triangle in it, but it has a a different kind of base. And it has ba basically a base for the front and the side. Right? The box itself and for 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 the beginning, right? If I go back 20 years, and I had to understand basically where does my line go, right? Because if I just draw a line like this, it I, my brain already says it goes sideways and it goes forward. So my brain has to, again, this is basically building the most simple transition through space, right? This is the, it's, it's what we do right now. So if I go forward, this is, this is how it goes, right? If I have a diagonal going down forward, this is it. If I have, basically, again, this is where the confusion begins, right? I can have the same line, but I want it to go sideways. Dun, 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 right? And at first, it is, it is complete bonkers for the brain. Because, again, where does the line go if this happens, right? Where does the line go? Does it go up? Does it go back? Again, this is, this is something what, what the brain basically has to figure out, and this one is going down. And technically, this one, and it could technically be, uh, let's, uh, move this over. Like, like, it, it's, it's so close, it's so close on this angle, right, that it, it might as well just go back. But maybe it's still, it's kind of going back, but then it goes, it goes weird. <clears throat> and it can still go forward, right? Because there's my box, and then it goes down, and then this one does what it does. And again, instead of basically choosing the triangle, I choose my base, a small base, so that I know there is a square, and I have a triangle in between. And this, again, it helps me measure because I have a square plane box that I can basically guide, go sideways, go down, and then basically give it a base, move it forward, move it forward down diagonally, move it forward, and then move it sideways, move it sideways and up, move it whatever, right? And again, visualization. <laughs> but this is like... <clears throat> if I if I look at any any sort of basically uh, I mentioned the, the supercars or sports cars I can look at the human body um, faces they all go somewhere and somewhere so, somewhere in space it's like when it goes nowhere it basically is a point when it flows it goes into two dimensions right. And then usually stuff goes someplace, and then it does something, and it does something else, and then it's, it's some. Oh, what am I drawing? You can recognize this because you understand that something goes someplace, and then suddenly it looks like something that you recognize, right? And this again is where does it go in space? But it goes forward, it goes down diagonally, and I can measure these angles and analyze this step by step. And then, if I go back to my weirdness, I can say, this is now my forehead, and this is basically one, and this is two, and basically this is one, and this is two. And the nose would be three, and this is four, and this is five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten planes is what I would need for the face. So basically, again, understanding the transition of 3D space projected on a 2D surface. 
And again, instead of basically saying this is my nose, I can pretend this is then going forward because I have a different plane, I have a different geometry. And instead of having a plane go sideways, I have this go sideways. And then instead of this going down, it goes back and is skewed. This is, it, it, it's again, it's like the transition between complexity is completely like my, my brain, <laughs> my brain is like, help, 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 but I, I, I got it, right? <clears throat> But again, step by step, and it, I, what I try to do is like, how do I connect these two points, right? Because they exist in, a, in, in the same space, but they have to be visualized. So again, I have basically this point, this point A, and it's a weird diagram. So point B is down and back and sideways. So it's down and back, and I can't, I can't draw it down from the top view. This is supposed to be the top view to help me understand how far it goes back and of how far it stands to the side and then it goes down right so what i what i do is basically um i try to piece boxes together where this is one box right and i can see that the line goes diagonally and there is a triangle in it right if i move this one forward and basically build the square I know these connect, and then it goes back, and then it goes sideways. Magic, but not really. <laughs> this it's it's extremely weird, extremely difficult, extremely odd to do it this way. But again, if I think about all the complexity of parts and pieces in the real world and stuff I want to draw, I need this. Because otherwise, there's there's nothing really explaining me any sort of complexity. What is what would really explain the complexity? And again, complexity. <clears throat> if we analyze complexity on on the two D basis, right? We have basically bi direction, and this again is where I draw snowflakes. Not really, but there is a geometric setup. And this is then something I try to convert into 3D, where I have my base, and I have something going forward, and let's just make it a triangle, right? And something goes sideways, and then um, I know there is my 45 degrees, right? There's my 90 degrees, horizontally, vertically, all right? And it could be this one, and it could be this one. From this, I can build my variation and just say there is another triangle. Which is then I have to copy it to the other side because symmetry, and again this is where things get really weird because if it's not symmetrical, you will see it, right? And the line, the line is easily changed to where I am again balancing. Does it go sideways? Does it go forward? And remember what I talked about the lean of the triangle where I have my base of the triangle and the tip point. And you can basically move it left or right, and eventually, if it does so, it it forms the ninety degrees. But you can easily identify if the triangle is leaning because the middle point has to connect to the center of the base, right? And you can see that it actually leans more to one side, right? It's like this is this is something I realized after like ten years of practice, and I love it because it helps me direct form into space more specifically, not just by using a square, but by using the triangle. And the triangle itself has more purpose and meaning than anything else ever could, because again, every line has meaning, or every line basically has a purpose. If the point. Basically, if the triangle is set up in a specific way, it leans to a side which defines basically its like dimensional directional properties. What? Meaning, meaning if the triangle leans, it has a bias towards basically going back in space, going sideways in space, or going forward in space. This is something I try to identify because the triangle itself um again madness because the triangle that I would draw 
could possibly be projected onto my base perspective. So when I draw the triangle, I try to identify the perspective, and that too is a is a weird thing because I still have to find my box, but not draw it. So that I know what is top, what is side, what is what goes where, really. And this this thing, <clears throat> basically, we we know stars, right? And you can see how galloped this is. <laughs> uh, so if I were were to draw the star properly, I pay pay attention to the tip point of my triangle and make sure it leans to the center, so it has no lean, right? And from this, I have to draw more triangles, but I pay attention to where the pointy part actually goes. And this again is the geometry. Now convert this into 3D. And then figure out what is happening if I lean my triangles to one point, basically one side or the next. Alright, I love it. Magic. Any questions? And you can see it is you're witnessing levels of analysis that is it's just mad. I I don't want to put it any other way. I'm not smart. I'm not smart enough to say I'm smart. That's yeah, it makes sense. But this is this is how I go about analyzing 3D, right? And it's not just like perspective grids and you need your energy points and blah, 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 all the stuff. It's Ah, madness. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> it's the awkward silence when the brains are basically just, they're broken. <laughs> yeah, that works as well, I guess. But as as far as as far as um the initial concept goes, right? And it was where does it go in space? Where does the line go? Can I build something your brain can recognize? Yes. Um, and I, I, I will, I will be gentle. I will be very gentle. But there is a, there is a, a thing. I think you know the thing. Does it help? It, it should help. There's a, there's another thing your brain recognizes. <laughs> Does it help? Does it help? No, it doesn't. Good, good. So it helps. When it doesn't help, it helps. It's perfect. Any questions? But so point point of my exercise that I would at the moment go through, and I did something yesterday, um, and I kind of like when I when I uh, it's it's like a scheduling thing, right? I play Call of Duty and I have fun, and then I play so, the single player games, which at the moment is Cyberpunk, and I get so thirsty for drawing because all the sci-fi stuff in Cyberpunk basically, and I stop playing the game after like five minutes and I start drawing some some things with my actually. Um, in pencil <clears throat> on on real paper. Can can you hear this? It's real paper. 
real paper. Um, but it, it started. I started to explore these these triangle shape things and to again figure out where does it go in space. And <clears throat> my thinking is there is a there is a sh shape language involved. It's basically these weird looking shapes. They come off triangles, right? It starts with the base, and they connect, right? And then you can basically define your 90 degree angle. It, it's so weird. Um, it's a sort of very, how do you call this, um, critical form building, right? And again, I, I lean towards these things where my brain has extreme difficulty. And that in turn helps me to identify the 3D, 2D conversion. And this, this is why I draw. Or basically, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just there, right? But then again, um, I have my shape and I draw my lines and I try to figure out what is going on, right? And I have my variations where this thing doesn't just go down, but it actually goes forward. So between these points, it forms a new triangle. It forms a completely different, it's, again, it's weird. Imagine the box basically being cut between points, but not in a square. But you have basically like a piece of cake, right? And it forms a flat and a wall. This is going up and you can see it. This should help the brain, right? To this is also going down, and I know it is flat. And from this, all I have to identify is what is between, so that I can basically say it is going diagonally down, but it has a specific surface, right? And this is what helps my brain, and I have to identify all of this weirdness. And this is one variation of what I'm trying to draw. Right? Instead of having basically this line, <clears throat> and this line is, is, uh, very particular because it ex, um, it splits the form, right? Between a, again, a new wall, a side plane and a top plane. And I have two of those. So again, I can choose this one go down. Like I had this one, right? It goes down in space. Very, very normal, very casual, right? What, what if, what if it does this? If it goes back. And again, I have the same shape, right? And by same shape, meaning I have something that is a triangle, but it has a base and it has a base. And I have this between. So there's my base. And there's my base. So there's my square. There's my square. There's my triangle. Square, square, triangle, square, magic. But th this again is something um, that I can understand and measure, right? Instead of having it be this, right? I can basically already define what it's supposed to be. And again, this is the, it's a part of complexity. I want to increase the complexity. And again, I can, instead of this one just going down and building a, a small square, a plane, I can have this one also go triangle. And again, uh, intuitively, I will just draw this one go down to again go back to something that I can recognize as a box where this is my wall. And there's no flat top plane, but the plane itself goes diagonally up. <clears throat> step by step, right? And again, we have all of this this emptiness in between, and my brain is trying to calculate how do I make it look like it is something, right? So that it's not completely random, and I know this could be a flat wall, and something has to happen between. And still, my my brain right now is definitely racing to figure out how to make it look like this is going down. So something. Um, and my brain, my brain has issues with 
basically this diagonal, this one should go down. And this one is flat and then goes down. And the, the weird line is this one, because it has a weird foreshortening. But it, it, it like falls off to the other side, right? Where this is the normal flat, the flat top, right? This one is flat, and this one goes down. But instead, this one going flat, it basically goes diagonal. And then still, it like all of the structure has to connect and basically be seamless, more or less. Any questions? Oh, this emptiness is breaking my brain. So, do I cover this up? What do I do? This is weird. This one. There's something, something's bothering me between, like, basically the emptiness. I can't figure out how to complete this. Can this go forward? There are still some issues, but it, it's not too bad. <clears throat> At least I um, managed to figure out the plan. That was weird. And still, I would instinctively just jump to the next study. Just do it all again. If you were to ask me what did you understand, I'd say some. If you then were to further ask what it is. <laughs> well, I suppose if you don't, if you don't do it, or if you don't want to, then you have nothing to worry about, right? If you don't want to ask questions, then it's fine. It's like, like... If among um, if if among all the words that I use is something that answers a specific question anybody has or you have, that is that is good. But otherwise, it is it is extremely it can be extremely difficult to follow what I'm saying, not to follow this general approach, I suppose. So if your brains explode, I know what it's like. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Otherwise, as long as as long as it's remaining logical and it makes sense in a logical way, then it's it's the best thing. At least, at least to me, and I'm thinking about, um, like if, if the brain, if your brain recognizes the logic, you are more inclined to approach it the same way or to learn from it. If you don't recognize the logic, your brain can just be like, nah, this is not it. 
right? As for as for I think um, if this if if it's answering any questions, it's answering the question nobody asks, right? It's still like for for um, be, you're being presented with a certain approach, a certain approach to drawing, which, um, in my opinion, and my bias um, <laughs> is very good. <laughs> to just to just summarize it very simply, but it it encompasses many different aspects in a logical kind of way where you basically don't have to consult books anymore, right? You don't have to consult random people, artists anymore and ask them how to do it because you have your through line, you have all the necessary information that is basically building a bridge. Even though it's very, it's like at least in my brain, this is I built my my I call it through line or bridge, right? Where you have all these different stepping stones that can be part of art, right? And it's simple as just saying 3D stuff. It it implies perspective. It implies space and all of the good stuff. Anybody usually wants to draw 3D. It's hard to get there properly, but still, usually we draw 3D objects. And being able to visualize 3D-ness, 3D objects, is, yeah, it's a little bit different from the stuff we want to draw, because the stuff that we do draw, it doesn't necessarily teach us how to, again, you know, keep it 3D. The flower, drawing a flower and drawing a people, a person and bones and stuff doesn't necessarily teach me all the stuff and all the fundamentals of basically <laughs> there's there's the word how to keep my stuff not flat and how to keep my stuff away from it being flat. And one of these, <clears throat> one of these extreme weirdnesses that I had is basically I wanted to draw just stuff, but make it awesome, make it 3D. And I didn't want to go there by drawing vanishing points and grids. So here I sit, uh, going, going complete mad about my triangles and angles, <laughs> which is, uh, is the, uh, how should I call it? the more appealing kind of suffering, right? It is always difficult. It's always basically uh, not desirable to realize that you want to draw things you can't draw. That again is where my brain... Um, it's very hard to detach myself. <laughs> From these difficulties, it usually um, stuff that is difficult and frustrating is is to be avoided, right? And which is um, internally clashing with my desire to draw stuff, and then I can choose the suffering between being bad at drawing or basically going insane, and eventually being able to draw the stuff I want to draw. Something. Something in between, maybe. And again, measuring measuring the perspective, it's it's so weird. And I know I have my side and I have my top. And I have to kind of build a proper front. And there's still something missing. Again, more, more analysis required is all there is. 
right? Draw it again, analyze the lines, <clears throat> analyze all things. There's definitely something going on on this thing. This is weird. Any questions? <laughs> Any other questions? And this, like, like the stuff I, ex I, I, I was just explaining, right? Like for two hours, basically. Um, it's more a theoretical than anything else, right? It's like how I draw, how I, how my brain processes visual stimuli or how my how my brain tries to find its way again through 3d space and drawing 3d space yes <laughs> yes in a way uh, cyberpunk has some has some awesome awesome techie stuff um, and there's um, like for for these practices, I gravitate towards certain shapes, and one one word is basically rocket pods. And all of these, many of these usual mech types, um, they have these pods with these rocket things. They they go pew pew pew. This is it's weird. They are mounted. And usually, usually they come in boxes. They come in boxes and they have a a thingy in the front for the pew pews. Um, there is imagery in my brain for Max and all sorts of high tech, hard surface, industrial stuff that has a lot of diagonals. Now, I don't know where it comes from, but it comes from somewhere. Like different robots, and I know there's Transformers in there. Um, different um, airplanes. They all have, they, they have this, a specific kind of design language. And even, even the supercars, so even the, um, the spa spaceships from Star Citizen. Basically, any sort of, space thing, any sort of sci-fi thing has the same same design language. Anyway, back to triangles. This is this is there's something there and then it's gone and I I I don't know. Um so one of these one of the difficulty is basically um with the imagery in my brain I have a certain impression. A certain impression of a form in space, in perspective, is has a certain amount of details, complexity, etc., etc., and I try to boil it down where I have the basic form and the basic 3D 3D impression. This is basically what I uh, should I, I I should stop using the word basically basically. Um, <clears throat> I try to step by step capture the impression that I see in my brain, and it's it's not always working. <laughs> it's definitely not always working. <sighs> Can yes, I don't want to draw heads right now. I really don't. This again is my brain is stuck. If I'm in, if I'm enticed, if I'm enticed monetarily enticed, sure. But otherwise, I can't right now. I, I really, my my brain doesn't want to because triangles. And I don't even.
Maybe I need more candy. Like I know, I know my start for the shape, and then something has to go forward is fine. And from this is basically it. It shouldn't go down, so it has to go diagonal, diagonal back, diagonal front, and this is where it technically should go down diagonally. And this is this is wrong. So there is a there should be a plane collapse, and this is also bad. This goes down. This goes back. This goes forward. No. <laughs> No, this is this is not it. This is not it. There's something else. There's something else in the transition of the triangle. No, <laughs> this is this is what I know, right? And this again is uh, usually um, the time where I'm off mic because there's nothing really to say, right? It's just me calculating intuitively the stuff, and this is it's extend. There's no real language for the balance, right? There, where <clears throat> basically I see two lines, right? And my brain fills fills it in, right? And like it doesn't it doesn't mean anything, right? For me, it's a three D transition where again my brain gives me more planes, and I know this is not my front, right? And between these two, I need to have a side, but the side is partially collapsed. Something this is empty, and again from there, it's like. You know something something were to tell me that I should draw this this angle different to then build a different transition between this and this and this right and this and this is basically points in space where I can have my basic volume and these are my points in space right it can be these points in space or any other points between these points in space and from this I basically build my shape any way I see fit Right, and from this, I have to portray or basically project it into my base perspective, which is three quarter facing to my right side. I see the side, I see the front, and I see the top. And between all of this, I still have to maintain my geometric structure, where every plane is basically identifiable between this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Right, and I can still break this apart into two more triangles and then three more triangles and have a completely different structure that is <clears throat> yeah complex any questions <laughs> it's it's like it's just how it is right there's no language there's no language for this other than saying it's complete madness this is this is the the calculations that I have to go through step by step there's another one that the double triangle there's something something about the triangles something about the the double triangle. How does this work? 
it has to fold and this one too Math doesn't doesn't really help. It doesn't really help because you don't want uh, basically the what you want at your equal is basically your your choice of what you desire to draw. There's there's no um, objective kind of approach to this, right? I could just draw very generic geometric stuff. And have this be behind my equal, where on the other side would be my formula, right? My approach to drawing and stuff and things. Numbers, numbers. I mean, I use ninety degrees and stuff as measurement for for the space, but too much mathematics doesn't really help because it's still it's very 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 subjective. Like. My my uh, internal goal. <laughs> it's complete mad. It's just mad. Like again, I try to. And this it's it's the same thing with again. Now 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 we now we can draw the face. Let's just draw the face because <clears throat> when I draw a face, right? I don't just want to draw a generic face. I want to draw the face. That basically I desire to draw, right? It should be the most perfect face I ever drawn, right? And that means that the nose itself, the nose has to be perfect. The nose structure, the nose shading, the nose lines, the nose angles, everything, right? And it has to, the lips specifically, the eyes very specifically, it has to capture a very specific impression. And this is basically where <clears throat> If you go away from drawing and where it's about sexual attraction, or basically the type of girl or the type of built boy or man that you like, right? Where it's not just, oh, they're attractive, right? But where you have the attraction, right? Complete attraction. Where there is a very, very, very small set of specific lines and specific angles that would tingle your senses. And then again, in a not just attractive sexual way or basic basically beauty, right? Where it's not just there for you to to gawk at, but where your brain is like, I have to understand this. Right? The specific set of specific angles, specific proportions, specific everything, right? To <laughs> To where you basically say, now I can draw what, what I want to draw. And this is, this, it's extremely specific at times. And so again, for me to be able to draw this one set of lips or understand the structure of the one set of lips, I draw 500 lips. <clears throat> There is a the point the point where I brought this up about the the sexual attraction is basically we have a very strong response to this type of stimuli and I'm not talking about boobs and naked and nudity right it's it's basically what makes the girl your girl or the boy your boy and they have specific eyes and specific lips etc etc right if I were to say um look at flowers they're so beautiful right people give me the finger because there is a different response right and the stronger the response the easier for the brain it is to remember so they go the mind is primitive who would have guessed <laughs> what a shocker right so again very specific lines very specific angles Any questions? <laughs> so this is why mathematics don't help because it doesn't it, it goes too specific into into your own perceptual bias, I suppose. 
where <clears throat> I say this is good because my brain gives me certain uh, certain response. So basically, there's certain chemicals released in my brain that say I like this. What's up, Mumpy? How things? Is it Sunday still? Yeah, it's Sunday. Happy Sunday. I am partially stuck in the rabbit holes, so I'm mad and I need candy. Sleepy. Oh no. My brain my brain is definitely gone. It is it is elsewhere. Definitely elsewhere right now. So there we have the face. It's five for face and I've, I'm fairly rusty with faces. And I wanna go back to my triangles immediately. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's already in my brain. Like my brain just goes like this, right? And then it has, it has different shapes that all have to be calculated and computed in, in these. Which is fine. Which is still fine. <laughs> it is, it is in my name, basically. And I shouldn't even, I shouldn't even bring it up. But there, there I am, the pool. <clears throat> anyway, computing, computing shapes and dimensionality is basically like I, I can, I can observe it, right? I can look into my own brain, I basically just reflect internally and. Let's just say there is a gravitational pull, and my brain is affected by it, and it involves triangles. <laughs> and it is, it is complete mad, and I, all I really want to draw is techy stuff, right? I want to draw techy stuff, then I want to draw my, my people ladies with techy stuff, and basically make them half cyborg, or make them full robot, or basically anything, right? And all I gotta do is figure out the stupid, the stupid thing with the triangles. And basically guide my brain to what it really, really sees, right? And again, I have this impression in my brain and I can't really say I understand completely, but all I can do is step by step try to get closer. This is, this is really it. It's mad, mad bonkers. This again is wrong. So I would, I would have to trace the form that I can't see. And I know <clears throat> I basically have the top plane. The top plane is easy to identify. What I know is this is a wall, right? The wall should extend all the way. That means I could possibly see it, right? And then from this point, I know this line is above the ground. That means there has to be a shadow, right? What I'm looking for <clears throat> is basically the wall that is covered up like everything behind my top plane has to be somehow in the space for me so that I can figure out the emptiness. It's like there's a volume, right? I have a spher spherical round volume. This is something I manipulate and I can turn it into a triangle and say this is where I cut my volume. So I can remove all of this and still say it is supposed to be round and curved. And it has a side plane, it has a top plane and a front plane. So what the brain is then missing is basically indicators that there is indeed a top plane and there is indeed a front plane. Right? This is something the brain likes to have. And maybe there is this one. So this is basically at an angle. And this one too. Magic. Right? It is, it is pretty much like a cone. Right? Where <clears throat> basically the end of the cone is not cut and not circular, but it forms something more round and something more spherical. 
this is a, it's a choice, right? Where again, I see basic geometry from my base square box, where I have a front and two hybrid planes between. And this is this is the cone, because I can cut this there, pull this to the front. There's my point, there's my cone, and there's my round back. And all of the geometry that I have in place basically helps me to manipulate the roundness into curvature. This is geometry. <laughs> in a simplified way. This is geometry. Right? If I then again go back from the roundness, roundness and curvature <coughs> of the cone, <coughs> To where I have this one in 3D is basically I have a top plane and I have side planes, right? And they all lead to a front point. Now I pull the point apart where it is a plane. And still it has to have a bottom, right? It, it has to have basically all this, all this roundness in structure, right? This is supposed, it's supposed to be round, but I'm gonna build, I'm gonna build the planes. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is my chin. Again, this is, it's, it's analysis. I'm analyzi analyzing, analyzing, <laughs> analyzing the geometry of form in space. And I'm not really strictly limiting myself to one or the other unless I do it, but still there is a, there's always a choice, right? What I can do and could do, right? Between the box, all I really gotta change is basically the curvature between this one and this one. Right? <clears throat> so technically everything, everything in between will change. I still, I have a top plane. And I know I have these weird looking angles. Right? And I can still choose between a flat top or a rounded top. This is a choice. Again, round, flat. Round, flat. Round, flat. Because there's no curvature in the line, right? And then again, this is the angle difference. Angle change, right? When the angle changes, everything starts to happen. This is flat logic, right? Curvature, curvature, magic, curvature. <laughs> it's, it's mind boggling, really. But this again is more 3D than it was. And still, I go by, I go by extending, right? Extension of space and form. And I do this with basically, um, all sorts of things because let's say this is realism, right? This is realistic. <clears throat> I would like to have the ability within my skill set to play around and go like this because this is, this is how I want to draw. Right? If you then go back to all the stuff I explained about going from 2D to 3D and building this and form and space, you understand the complexity. At least you have like the sort of, um, should present you with the abyss, the abyss of basically stuff you have to learn and understand to get there as opposed to presenting you with basically nothing where you know less than before, right? If you have any sort of insight into any sort of uh, process or any sort of whatever, no matter the complexity, you're already in it, right? It's the foot in the door. And basically you can't get it out because you're stuck, but you're in it, right? This is, this is kind of, <clears throat> and I always, I like, Flexibility behind uh, basically being creative because stuff becomes a choice and it shouldn't again I said this before or basically some days ago 
uh, many days ago. <laughs> it should be a matter of your skill set, right? You should be able to choose between doing it this way and not doing it this way. And it shouldn't just be a no because you lack the skill. And when you think about it this way, basically, um, the skill and the understanding that we have, they become the tool for our self-expression. There's, there's, there's no real limitation. But basically, there is a limitation once you really find how you want to express yourself. And it doesn't matter what skill level it really takes, right? I, I only know <laughs> the, the amount of madness that I need for this, for this to actually work. Because ultimately, my imagination is the limit. And who says, who says, I can't have a jaw structure, right? That basically defies all laws of physics and all laws of anatomy. And again, this is where it becomes a choice to where am I able to complete the structure in its complexity where it is accurate and where I like it, right? Where it's not just, you know, again, <clears throat> we all work to our levels of skill, right? And that internally limits what I can and cannot draw. And this again is where I either have creative freedom or I don't. And I'd rather choose to have it, even though it means, uh, I can't say it's a lot of work, but it's not really a lot of work. Yes. Just to, I'm trying to make a point and I have no idea if it sticks, but there is, like, um, things, things can be so simple. <clears throat> and my brain knows how to make it more difficult. But things can be so simple. Sometimes. As long as I'm just cheeky and not wrong, right? That's it's all good. It's all fine. Any questions? And I could ask, am I wrong? Am I wrong though? I suppose I'm not, right? Right, right. The question, the question that anybody can ask is basically, how do you get good at drawing? And then contemplate. Contemplate. How do you get good at drawing what you want to draw? Things can be so simple, but my brain just knows how to make them more difficult. <laughs> I can so simple sometimes. <laughs> yeah. It falls in line. It falls. Uh, why am I making the point? Um, unspecific. Unspecific yet specific. Um, there can always be the question, why, why do you do what you do? Right? Why do I draw like I draw? Why do I study like the way I study? Why is this my approach? Why do anything? Right? The idea is basically, and I can only assume there's somebody listening that gets it, right? <coughs> Excuse me. The point is, um, and I, I, I should, I shouldn't call it through line, but there is the idea of, um, how do I put this in words? Like, usually, usually when we start with drawing, 
we have no idea how it works. We can uh, basically, when we see art and we want to make art, we have no idea how it works. We see people do good stuff, and we have no idea how they do it. We can easily believe in talent, right? And like I believe, um, if I if I use the right words, right, the point serves as a sort of approach angle. Like all you need, all anybody needs to go from clueless to having the idea, right, to not being clueless, is the information that says this is where you are and this is your goal. And you need this information to understand this is what you got to do to get from now to your goal. Well, now I know what you mean with cheeky instead of you mean it literally i was I was thinking figuratively, but doesn't doesn't really matter like it's 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 a creative choice really like if I choose to go white on my cheeks, <laughs> that is what I do, right. So they could now there could be more confusion, but otherwise it's just a choice. And it should again, it should be the choice of skill, right? If can I make my things different, not not how I see it on reference? Can I be creative? Oh God, what a question! This this is it's. Like if you just want to make art, skill is no no consequence is is irrelevant, right? If you want to draw paint specific things, skill is all there is. Like to understand the specific thing that you want to do with with the thing like pencil or brush or digital things or whatever. All you need again is this information. between but i suppose we are we are getting we are getting sidetracked because of the confusion between the cheeky bones and the the, the literal and figurative meaning that something <laughs> this is this is definitely where i got confused because i didn't i didn't i didn't pay attention to the cheeks i was drawing i was just paying attention to what i was trying to convey and say or me listening to myself. And it is it is like about what I was saying, um it is it is very different um to me to me <laughs> hearing to me hearing what I say and comparing it to what others would tell me when I try to learn and understand more about drawing and art. And I, I tr I'd rather listen to what I say than listen to what other people say. Even though it is it is complete madness, right? But what it what it helps is basically understand all of these bits, right? And unfortunately, there wasn't anybody telling me this, so I had to develop this, find it out myself through all these weird looking years of practice and suffering because <laughs> drawing. Um, point being is I can't I can't tell people to just look at reference and practice even though I do and read books. It's not I can't. Right? Because it's it's not how I learned. It's not how I got good. And it's certainly it's certainly not something I can tell people without without explaining you know what is really going on right there is always a purpose and that is that is purpose nobody explained me and purpose is very well it's just what do I got to do to get good or to reach my goal with art or drawing or skill or whatever it may be
I suppose now it makes more sense after explaining the point. <laughs> well, basically, uh, having having another reach around and um, going full circle again. Like again, basically, it all it all has to come together, right? This is where I start with planes. I st I ultimately start with lines. Lines build square planes. They build shapes. Right, the shape itself is part of a dimensional entity, which is a 3D volume. Right, and the component that I thoroughly dissect and absorb is the line. Right, I snort it just like this, kappa. If I understand the line, look at what I can draw. Right, because this comes out of my. It, it's a line. Right, it's the same thing. Right, and from there it's basically interpretation of what these lines mean, what they do, what they're supposed to, you know, represent. How <clears throat> yeah, how do you get good at drawing? Contemplate. That is that is really the first step is for you to contemplate. <laughs> there's there's no other way. There's no other way. Because to some degree, to some degree, again, you have the skill and you have creativity. Creativity is all yours. The way you want to draw, the stuff you want to draw, the colors, the shading, the style, design language, shape language, etc., etc. That is for you. The skill is basically the fundamental uh, part of everything that should get you to the skill set you need to do what you want to do. Yeah, just draw. Whoa. <laughs> draw the circle and then complete the L. Draw, draw the owl. Faces are weird. Do I want more candy? Where's my tea? What is the time? Time actually goes very fast when I start talking. It's like almost three hours again. Excuse me. Any questions? <laughs> Am I still making sense? If, there's, if it doesn't make sense, do ask. If you want to criticize, please criticize. Ask me questions. I need more candy. <laughs> Any more questions? Any questions? Now I want to go back to my triangles already. Shit. Triangles everywhere. Candy. Just a moment. This is fine. I'll be right back. Um, and if there if there's no questions, right? I I just go off mic and I do more triangles because I need I need it I needs the madness. But as far as as far as I can see, microphone test has been successful and there was no issues. Excellent. Any questions? Be right back. Candy time. Tea time. Be right back. <laughs>